this is the skull outline along here. And so I've made some extra tabs to come up to help uh, contain it, keep it from sliding around. For these purposes, you'll have the handle, I mean the teeth pointed towards the handle. You can adjust the tension with the handle here. Patient, you want the, the saw vertical. You, you, you can't really do all those curves and such if, if you're at, a, at an angle. And you really don't have to push on it that hard. The, the saw, the downward stroke of the saw is doing the cutting. You can move the saw, orientation of the saw, or you can move the orientation of your project. So this, this is a scroll saw. It, it has a much deeper throat to it. It's adjustable here. I think we're doing fine in terms of having the the clamp down uh, on top of the the sheet to keep it from the sheet from vibrating when it's going up and down. These uh, they do have a, a speed control on it. I find that that uh, is that okay. If it goes too fast, uh, it goes so fast that it melts the plastic and just sort of melts its way through and then you have this gash that's all uh, welded back, healed over behind itself. So um, I kind of avoid these if I can just do it by hand. But uh, if, it's, if you have a, a deeper piece that the, the, the uh, coping saw won't work or if you're really good at this and don't uh, run it too fast. But it helps not to be in a hurry. That's when you start burning it and melting it. good or better than I did by hand. So you might want to mark uh, what side is up so uh, that you don't lose track of it when you start bending things and borrow your pen. Okay, so uh, the next thing we would do would be to, to file uh, and sand these edges. So we're back to the otter skull. And so these tabs will fold up. I could probably have... Uh, made them a little smaller, I can always go back. This'll, this tab will come up uh, you know, below his chin. This will come up behind his skull. And I filed the edge and sanded. So now we'll, 
we'll soften the edges with the torch. The, from sanding it, it's sort of a matte finish. And that flame just uh, clears it right up. Getting hot. Glad I have my gloves on. No flames. It starts flaming up and smoking. You're too hot. So I'm going to heat heat the tab up and bend it to uh, contour with the skull. Okay, you ready? I'm just hitting that general area. If I want a sharp bend, then I'll just focus along the seam. But because I want to uh, bend the whole tab, I'll uh, heat the whole general area. You can usually see that you're approaching uh, the heat temperature because the, the tab will start to sag from the gravity. The tip will heat up faster than the, where it is down towards the, the body. So I might heat that up a little more without overdoing the edge, uh, the tip of it. There, see? Now I'll heat up the tip just in case I need to. It cools pretty quickly, so kind of have to act fast. So I've got the orientation. I'm holding that the contour I want it. Don't let the conservator see you do this. I don't know how you're supposed to do this without doing doing it, you know, to the actual object. But once you get the, the uh, angle you want, then uh, just kind of hold it in place until it, it cools enough to hold its position. Bend the tab over the back side. So that has the, the skull fairly well cradled. We could put felt under it. I don't think it's necessary with the acrylic. I think that's fairly stable on, on ours. We, we kind of uh, put some museum putty or something on them. I could tighten those up a tad, but I think you get the idea. Okay. So the next consideration is, is how to uh, orient it. 
you might want to have it at a bit of an angle. You want the uh, supporting rod to be centered just so it doesn't stress the joint. So what I want to do is uh, cut this off at the, the height that I want the skull to be uh, sitting. One option would, would be to uh, just stick with this to go all the way down into your case. What we did with, with ours was just to cut this off short and uh, drill a hole in it and then attach it to one of the uh, bronze rods for the, for the height of it. It, uh, it, made the, it made the exhibit a little less cumbersome having all this thick rod. So we'll be attaching the post to the cradle using this solvent. It's not actually uh, glue. It's not like super glue. It's a solvent that, that dissolves the acrylic and, and uh, fuses the acrylic to itself. So I have pretty good contact. Hopefully it's good enough for this job. And we've put some of the solvent into this needle applicator. Very fine needle there. Um, you got to be careful with this stuff. If, if the joint you're making is going to be visible somewhere, you don't want to dribble this stuff all over everything. You want to get that in, get in and out. It just takes a little bit. It's like I say, it's not like glue. So all you got to do is get enough of a of a surface in the joint there to to uh, to do the job. So I'm just going to get in here and whoops, I dribbled it like I said, don't do. And just set it in there. Fortunately, my dribbles won't be showing. Then you just let that uh, let that set for, I don't know how long it takes. I, I usually leave it for 20 minutes or so. 